what is up you guys welcome back it's been a minute if you guys are new here welcome just another day at headquarters man i do the same thing every day to try and produce consistent results and it's working so we're gonna get right into this one have you ever had a friend in uh that was an addict and you know you try to give them the benefit of a doubt benefit of the doubt right you know the position they're in you know you know they'll do anything to get their next fix and then one day they leave you high and dry you know that could mean many things that could mean monet monetarily you know it, it can mean a number of things theft all that all that and then one day they decide to leave you high and dry and they don't give a damn but you do it's a total mind for you right total mind f for you you don't know what to do you've known this cat for a long time and all of a sudden they get caught up in their addiction and that becomes everything in their small little world have you ever had a friend like that they just up and leave you dry take you for a little bit of cash well i was that guy sometime 2010 2009 something like that i had a friend i met him when i was 16 we used to work in the mall at a sports store, a little retail sports store. Really good guy. He was like a year or two older than me. Good, good dude, man. He was a sweet guy too. Really sweet dude. Just another Mexican Chicano like me. Real sweet guy, family oriented, right? So, known him for quite a few years. And then, um, as we got older, we kind of drifted apart. So, <clears throat> one day, as time went on, one day he, uh, I think he hits me up through Facebook or he sends me a text message, something like that, right? He's like, yo, let's hang out. I haven't seen you in a while. Are you doing all right? And of course I give him the, yeah, I'm fine, bro. I'm fine. You know, working at a hotel. When in reality, I wasn't, when in reality, I got fired from that hotel for stealing money. So he hits me up. He's like, yo, let's go have some drinks. Let's go to uh, meet me at a, a strip club on the east side. So I'm like, all right, cool. At that point in time, I was balls deep in my addiction, dude. Everybody that was in my life was a potential target for me. What I mean by that is I didn't care. I was reckless. I would do anything and everything to get whatever I needed from them. Whether it's a ride, money, pills, whatever. That was the way my mind was. That was the way my moves were at that time. reckless not caring so I didn't have any cash on me I barely had enough change I came accumulated enough change that was in my room just for like a, a gallon of gas I was riding dirty my insurance uh, was expired I'm sure my tags were as well but I had a car and I had an addiction. I had a, a, a monkey on my back, if you will, that I had to feed. And I had to feed that monkey every few hours. So he hits me up. And in my mind, I'm like, okay, this, this could be uh, a few beers, right? You know, and whatever else I could get. That morning, I just used enough to not feel sick. So he hits me up. We meet up like 2 o'clock, something like that, at the strip club. And we just chop it up. We have a good time. 
he, he, he uh, I let him know I haven't received my check from work yet. So he's like, no problem, man. I just want to see you. All of this is on me. So beer after beer after beer, lap dance after lap dance after lap dance. I had fun, right? I was getting buzzed. I was getting more ballsier as the time went on. So every time I drink, I start fiending for hard stuff, you know, the powders, you know, all that, all that. I get, I, I, I get fiending for that stuff. But I knew if I had my choice at the time, that day, if I, if I had the choice between the bag of Coke or my black, my H, I need the, the black, the H. So... I needed some dope because I, I didn't have any and I needed to get well, you know, sometime after that. So, I'm tr I, in my mind, I was too ashamed to ask him, like, bro, could you lend me 20 bucks, 30 bucks, 40 bucks? Because he would ask why. He's like, we're here already. I'm buying you drinks and buying you lap dance and stuff like that. So I knew he would ask why I would need that money. I didn't have, have it in me to ask him that. So ultimately what your boy did was, you know, just milked him, milked him for another drink or two. And uh, so we had drinks on a little table, you know, it was me a little table, circular table, and him on the other side of that. He would go to the ATM, get some more cash, get some change. So he had a little stack of cash on that table. He's like, yo, watch this. Watch this real quick. I got to go to the restroom. Well, he went to the restroom. Automatically, I look at that cash. Just look at it. I'm thinking, that's mine. So, while he's in the restroom, <clears throat> I look at the cash, I grab it, put it in my pocket, keep it on the restroom, and I just walk out that strip club, go to my car, take off. At that time, I call whoever I'm picking my, uh, my H up from, right? He's like, okay, come over. So I have this cash in my pocket. I'm like, yo, I need a, uh, a 40 bag. And so that was two 20 bags of H. So I'm on my way already, far from uh, the strip club. While I'm on the road, I call my boy that was at the strip club. I'm like, bro, they kicked me out. They kicked me out. I went to go. I tell him this. I went up to the girl that was dancing on the platform and gave her a dollar. And on my way back to the seat, on one of the steps, I kind of tripped. I tell him this. This didn't happen. I tell him this. So I tell him I kind of trip. I don't fall. I just trip. One of this, I tell him, I trip, right? So I also tell him one of the security guards saw this. And I tell my boy, my friend that I've knew for so long, I tell him that the security guard kicked me out. And I was so upset, I just took off. And I tell him, uh, I have the cash on me, bro. When I see you next time, I'll, I'll give it to you. Do you think he got that cash back? No. He, at the time I was on the phone with him, <clears throat> He's like, oh, dang, bro, you know? He didn't, I never had to lie to this cat, right? I never had to lie to my boy. So he, at that time, I, I'm thinking he understood. I don't know if he believed me, but at that time he understood. Um, it was like around 40 bucks, maybe 40, 60 bucks, something like that. It was nothing to him. He's like, look, bro, just, just get home safe. I'm like, all right, bro, thank you, I will. So we just hang up. Then I go pick up, get my H for the day. And uh, 
that was that. How was that? I was that big of a piece of crap. I was willing to burn that relationship. At that point, I didn't give a damn if I saw that dude. You know? If I did, I'm, I'm sure I'd be trying to get over on him. <clears throat> so what's the message in this video? Don't do dope. Don't do drugs. And if you decide to hang out with one of your old friends who is in active addiction, keep your money with you. Be aware of your surroundings. Because if your friend is anything like me, I would have left you high and dry. Might have taken your car. Might have taken your girl. If I was at your house, I'd be running through your restroom cabinets, seeing if there's any some, any sort of opiate in there. I even went to the extent of stealing some ibuprofen 800s. I wasn't an opiate, but I just kept on to those for whatever reason, right? So, there's two messages right there. I'm sure there's another message in this story for you, right? Just be aware of your surroundings. And don't be a dirtbag. That's the third message. Thanks for listening.